Green Oak Consulting Group. We're so pleased that you joined us today to learn a little bit about uh, charitable gift annuities. It's a new year and this is an opportunity to for you to learn and for us to learn from you a little bit about um, uh, if you have any pets and animals and volunteering. And so let's, before I get started, um, and before I'm Mary, obviously, and there's Bill, raise your hand, Bill. Um, I wanna say that Pet Partners has had the opportunity to have a great number of uh, live streaming programs. And most of them have been about animals and how to volunteer and wonderful topics from our uh, volunteers and partners across the United States. So the one thing we haven't talked about is charitable gift annuities, which is a far cry, isn't it, Bill, from talking about animals? So we're gonna make this as lively as possible since we won't be talking about our furry friends or uh, visits that so many of our wonderful volunteers do. But we're glad you're with us today. And my name is Mary Bomke. I'm with Pet Partners just shy of six years now. And my role at Pet Partners is to help people um, kind of achieve their philanthropic ideas through outright gifts or gifts through a legacy and which a charitable gift annuity is part of a legacy gift. And I'm pleased to be here with you. Um, or down, so I don't have any uh, new uh, pet stories to share with you, but we're, we're BD, between dogs right now. And uh, that will change at some point, probably this spring. So anyway, I'm Mary, and Bill, would you like to introduce yourself? From sure. Thank you, Mary. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bill McMorrin. Our firm is called Green Oak. Um, I used to live on Green Oak Drive, when that's where the name came from long ago. Um, I do have two dogs, uh, both rescues. Harry, if you could imagine a, a German Shepherd and a Basset Hound mix. Mm. I know, it's a low rider um, <laughs> and he's 13 and he's quite frisky again. Somehow he's discovered it. Um, he got a squeaker toy for Christmas that lasted more than a day. And uh, now he just comes up and wants you to play with him with it. And then I think the other thing I have to say is never mix a Chihuahua and a Terrier. Uh, we have Ruby who is one of the most demanding Chihuahua Terriers you'd ever want. She's seven and um, just a nonstop puppy dog. So. We enjoy pets uh, a great deal at our house. And, um, you know, we miss the ones like, like I know, we miss our dogs that have passed on, um, Haley and Lulu. But yes, we have good dogs. Thank you. Oh, well, are either your dogs uh, therapy animal dogs material, Bill? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. When my wife is in the hospital, we talked about sneaking Ruby in, but that's against the rules and they both shed. So neither oh. of them are really appropriate. Oh, all right. And they bark. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that. And hello to everybody. We see somebody from Nevada joining us and North Texas and uh, Tucson, Ashley and Slovakia. So that's probably the furthest dial in that we've got. So welcome, everybody. And I want to explain the relationship between Pet Partners and Green Oak Consulting. Uh, Pet Partners is, has now offering a charitable gift annuity program. And there's some back of house administration work that needs to be done. And Green Oak is our partner with charitable gift annuities. So we're pleased to present this program to you. And if you have any questions along the way, please pop them in the, ho the, the questions and we'll um, get to those questions as we unfold the program today. So with that, Bill, would you like to start us off and um, talk a little bit about the history of charitable gift annuities? Well, let yes. me back up before we get to your history. I wanted to share with you that even though Bill and I have um, been working with charitable gift annuities, gosh, I've been for like 20 years. Bill, how long has your experience been? A, a bit longer. Okay. Well, okay. Well, so between us. We've got you know four or five decades of working with charitable gift annuities, but I wanted to share this disclosure statement with you. Even though we um, are familiar with ch charitable gift annuities, we are not here to share any legal or tax or financial advice with you. That is best served to leave that to your professional advisor. 
So I just wanted to put that out there in the beginning that we're not here to answer those type of questions, but just to be on share information with you. So anyway, Bill, back to the history of charitable gift annuities. Okay. 101. 101. Exactly. If we look at the next slide, you can't really see it very well. Um, but this is a, a, a famous picture of uh, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And um, the re I thought, you know, since it is so bad, uh, oops, this is a this is the back of a two dollar bill. Oh, well, that's I know it's it's sort of reversed. So this is the same picture that is on the back of the two dollar bill, and the reason that I'm sharing it with you today is that this was one of the many uh, Revolutionary War historical paintings that were done by John Trumbull, Jonathan Trumbull of Connecticut, and you know there's four pictures of Washington. One's in the Smithsonian. All of those great things. But well, the problem was that that um, when Jonathan Trumbull was was pretty old and sick, he was living in New York City uh, in 1832, and he had all of these great paintings that no one had ever bought. And so what he wanted to do was to sell them and have enough money to live on. And Harvard University, apologies to anyone who is in the Crimson family, um, Harvard University was the 800-pound gorilla back then. They had uh, all the money in the world and they were ready to buy them from John Trumbull so he'd have enough money to live on. But Jonathan Trumbull, his grandfather was a, a ranking colonial uh, officer um, in uh, prior to the revolution. Jonathan Trumbull himself um, was from Connecticut and there is Trumbull, Connecticut if you uh, visit Connecticut ever, I'm from there. Um, and so he, his loyalties were to Yale, uh, the blue and white. And Yale had no money then, so what happened was that an attorney, also a Yaley, said, you know, here's a good idea. You give the paintings to Yale and Yale will pay you money for the rest of your life, like an annuity sort of thing. And that's what happened. John Trumbull uh, basically exchanged his paintings for an income for his life, an annuity. Uh, and today, I think you can still visit the Jonathan Trumbull Museum uh, when you go to New Haven and visit Yale. So that's sort of a, a short history. Uh, we could go another hour on the nuances as gift annuities <laughs> move forward, but no, I'm going to hand it back to Mary. <laughs> well, probably these callers, now I see somebody from um, Texas and, oh, a Chihuahua, Bill. I know, I saw it. Lucy. There you go. Lucy. Your dog could have been a Pet Pet Partners uh, team member. So Yeah, well, they're allowed in the office, let alone. <laughs> yeah. so well, thanks for sharing a bit about the history. I bet no one expected during your little um, history class when they when they called in today. So let's let's go to the next slide and just kind of dive in to see what what is a charitable gift annuity, which is abbreviated CGA. If you see it, um, then you you know it's charitable gift annuity, and really it's just a contract contract between an individual and a nonprofit. It's as simple as that. And for an exchange of an asset, like appreciated securities or a cash gift in this case with pet partners, then a, a, a charitable gift annuity can be established. And for the remainder of that person's life or a couple, pet partners agrees to pay um, a payment stream to um, the annuitant. And so it's a great way for an individual to support a nonprofit while also receiving a benefit back. And that's um, the, the, the reason it's a, it's a donation in part is because that contribution becomes the property of the nonprofit. And in this case, that's pet partners. And then for the remainder of their life, these, the payment goes to this individual or the couple. And it allows someone really to plan for their future. Um, seniors use it oftentimes when they have liquid assets, such as CDs or savings, that they can um, liquidate at some point and turn it into a gift annuity and receive a steady income for the remainder of their lives. And younger people often set one up for their parents or their grandparents. So they're used in different um, capacities. And I've never met someone who has not liked a charitable gift annuity and that we often have repeat annuitants. 
The one thing it's is important is it's not an investment. And so it should not be considered an investment within your portfolio. And it's different than a commercial annuity. Commercial annuities often pay higher interest rates, but there's no donor intent within a commercial annuity. So there's they're different that way. And then once an asset is transferred to, to a par, pet partners, um, the gift becomes irrevocable. So it's different from a CD that you can think, oh, six months from now, I'm going to be cashing in my CDs. Not so with a charitable gift annuity. It's irrevocable. And once it's established, it's for the remainder of your life. And that's when the fixed income stream is paid out. Um, we we have a requirement at Pet Partners that to establish a, an a immediate gift annuity, they are for people who are 65 years of age and older, but we can also arrange deferred annuities. So if somebody's like 55 or 60 years old and they're planning for the retirement, they can uh, set up a deferred annuity with uh, Pet Partners. And those are wonderful planning tools for their future. And the assets that Pet Partners accepts is uh, cash or appreciated securities. And I think Bill, in just a moment, will talk a little bit more about the advantages of using an appreciated security to establish a gift annuity. Um, the other thing is um, we, right now, Pet Partners offers charitable gift annuities in 35 states. And if you're not in a state where we offer them, but you're interested in them, then there are many opportunities for us to explore with you, uh, work through a community foundation in your community, or there's also uh, charitable gift annuity administrators that can help you set up one of these charitable gift annuities uh, with pet partners. So anyway, um, oh, we've got some more visitors oh, from Kentucky. Hi, Vicki, that's exciting. And uh, again, from North uh, or from Fort Worth, Texas. Hello to our friends in Texas. So, Bill, would you like to start talking about um, the benefits of a charitable gift annuity? I've mentioned a couple of them, but why don't you dive in a little bit deeper? Sure, very happy to. There's a lot of benefits of a charitable gift annuity, and, and you can boil it down to three things, um, maybe four. Um, the first is that, and most importantly, you support a charity you believe in because you are contributing to the future mission of that organization. So when you do that, you receive an immediate, as Mary said, an, an income tax deduction that is based uh, not on a dollar for dollar. Let's say that and we'll look at an illustration, but if you gave Mary a dollar today for pet partners, that dollar would go to work. With a charitable gift annuity, you're telling Mary that sooner or later, you're going to get some money from me. And the way the IRS in its wisdom gives us a formula, we create uh, an income tax deduction amount based on the future value of that gift uh, to charity. And so, so you have the benefit of supporting the mission of pet partners, which is so critical. You have an immediate partial income tax deduction, and then you receive a lifetime income uh, usually quarterly is, is the best way to go. You receive a very steady income stream as long as you are living. And um, we know that people who are generous, who do charitable gift annuities, do tend to live longer. And so they actually take that into account uh, when they calculate what the rate of payment should be. So um, the simple answer is if you do a gift annuity, you'll live longer. Um, but that that's uh, based on on historical context. It's no guarantee. Um, the other thing is that if you use appreciated stock, which is quite the rage these days, the way the market has been, is that you can contribute the appreciated stock at the market value that day of the stock, and your gift annuity is based on that amount. Now, let's say back in 1996, you bought Amazon stock for $18 a share when it first appeared. And now today it's worth far more than that. Uh, if you sell it, you have to pay taxes on that difference, but by putting it into a charitable gift annuity, you receive the full market value of the gift. Any capital gains you receive would be part of your payments over your lifetime, so it dissipates the impact of the taxes. And you get a, an incredible income stream from a stock that, that really wasn't paying anything in dividends. So it's, it's a great tool to 
Um, avoid capital gains, a great tool to get an immediate income tax deduction, a great tool to bring in a steady income stream, and most importantly, it is a powerful way to support the future mission of pet partners that you that's so important to all of us and so valuable. So um, let me give you an illustration of what a charitable gift annuity would do. Um, we're going to take a 65-year-old person. Uh, we're going to fund a, a charitable gift annuity with $10,000 cash. Um, and what that means is then that that person will be receiving a payout of about 4.2%. Uh, now, if this person were 91, he or she would be receiving a payment of 8.6%. So the payouts are tied to the age of the individual, the life expectancy for when the money will arrive at pet partners in theory. So in this case, uh, the 65 year old person with a, a 10 year, uh, I'm sorry, with a $10,000 charitable gift annuity will be receiving $420 a year tax free. I'm sorry, oops, I was wrong. They'll be receiving $420 a year. Of that portion uh, of the money, the $420, $360 of it will be tax-free. So because that is essentially your money being given back to you. And so what happens, remember I mentioned that IRS calculation, we used your age, we used the payout rate, and we use uh, what the IRS considers what's called a midterm discount rate that's sort of a factor of future value. And so what the IRS says is, congratulations, um, if you're 65 today, you're gonna live to be, uh, you're gonna live to the year of 2039. And after 2039, all of your income will be taxable. Now, that's a good thing, actually. You get more money tax-free, uh, well, you get more money uh, than the IRS says you're supposed to get. So that is sort of in a nutshell how a charitable gift annuity works. The, the immediate income tax deduction that's equal uh, to uh, about, uh, it's about $10,000, about three to $4,000 of immediate income tax deduction. There is the $420 of income every year. Uh, the tax-free portion of it is $360. So in the end, you're making a significant gift around five to $6,000 to pet partners. So it's a win-win-win, uh, I think, for everyone but the IRS. So uh, with that, I'm gonna put it back to Mary. Well, and, and if your favorite topic at school was not math, then, um, and if, if the numbers are kind of, ooh, then um, feel free to, there's a couple ways we can easily um, explain that more to you. And uh, Pet Partners has a, uh, a plan giving site and it's uh, petpartners.giftlegacy.com that is over in the sidebar there. And so you're always welcome to go and there's actually a calculator online where you can plug in your, your numbers. And also I'm um, happy to send a sample illustration that we'll talk to you um, in just a few minutes about as well. So anyway, you're probably thinking, well, does pet partners, how do they come up with the rates and who comes up with that? So on the next page, um, I just wanted to explain briefly that there's an organization called the American Council of Gift Annuities, and they were formed um, in 1927, so almost 100 years of eight, 100 years ago, and they were formed for the purpose of educating um, and offering services to American charities regarding uh, gift annuities, because many states regulate insurance. Um, the, the issuance of gift annuities. And so like other organizations, Pet Partners wants to follow the, and adhere the rules and abide by um, the appropriate insurance commission rules and the IRS. So we, along with 97% of other uh, charities in the USA, follow the guidelines of the American Council of Gift Annuities. And so the rates that are set by the ACGA, which are reviewed, often are, um, they are established in a way that they are in accordance with the uh, state insurance regulators and the IRS that, as Bill mentioned, um, are approved for actuarial tables. And so the, the rates are designed that the end of the annuitant, that's the end of the annuitant's life, that the nonprofit, and in this case, pet partners, 
will um, receive approximately 50% of that gift annuity that was set up. So that is how um, we follow, like I said, the, the rates that are set forth by the American Council of Gift Annuities, which has a site also, acga.org, if you ever wanted to dive in a little deeper about charitable gift annuities. Um, the, that next slide that shows the rate, you would have to have um, a super magnifying glass to look at the rates. Um, so I think I'll just offer a couple of um, ideas for you. Um, so there's rates for a single life of a charitable gift annuity, and then there's rates for uh, two people. And as you can imagine, the rates for a single person for one annuitant are greater than the, the rates for two people. But I am speaking from experience that there are um, benefits of, of getting older. And um, one of those is, you know, you can get a rest, go to a restaurant and maybe you get a discount. You can join AARP and you can um, think of retirement down the road and what hobbies and interests you, including perhaps volunteering for pet partners with your beloved animal. But also as you, as we get older, um, the charitable gift annuity rates are more um, amenable to you. So if someone is 65, and you can't see that on the um, screen right now, if someone is single, they do a single life, they're 65 years old, like Bill was talking about earlier, they get, would have a rate of 4.2%, which is uh, considerably more than a, uh, what a CD would be paying more right now. But again, this isn't a CD, so it's, this is an irrevocable gift. If someone was um, 69 years old, then their rate would be 4.6%. And someone who's 75 years of age, their rate would be 5.4%. So you see that as, as we age, then the rates become more um, attractive through a charitable gift annuity. And the same thing for a, um, a like a couple, the rates... Um, they're a little bit lower, but they get larger as the, the couple ages. And again, I'm happy to share those rates with you because it's just too, gonna be too hard to show on a, a slide with this, with this live stream presentation. So let's turn it back over to Bill. And do you wanna talk about some steps on how if someone's interested in learning more on how to establish a charitable gift annuity, Bill? Surely, thanks, Mary. Yeah. What we do is if you were to tell Mary your age, your birth date, please, your birth date is, is the best way to do it. And sort of what you'd like to see happen in a charitable gift annuity, we you always just use sort of a $10,000 number as a starting point to give you a good illustration of percentages. But basically, if you let Mary know your birth date, um, we are happy to give you an illustration precisely for what your payment would be, what your income tax deduction would be, um, and a very clear sort of description of how the gift annuity works for your specific situation. So there's a sample illustration. The um, next step is that if you want to do a gift annuity, let Mary know, um, tell her if it's going to be cash or it's going to be stock. Uh, one time, this is my favorite story of gift annuities, is that we had a woman who had the Krugerrands, the golden Krugerrands many years ago that they were bought very cheaply when gold was $800 an ounce or 500. And gold at the point that we did a gift annuity was around $1,500, $1,800 an ounce. And so she'd had these Krugerrands she had never been able to sell because of the tax hit. She kept them in a medicine bottle in her dirty laundry. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So uh, that's what she wanted to fund the gift annuity with. And we could do that because it was considered a, a, an asset, um, liquid asset. And so I was the one who received it and had to drive 50 miles to a gold dealer to sell it. <laughs> that was one of my more nervous gift annuities. But the assets transferred. If it's cash, obviously, you can write a check. Uh, if it's stock, you can have your broker uh, send it to pet partners um, via uh, D direct transfer, DTC, um, which is efficient. Um, then what we know is we, when you send an appreciated asset, what we do is we look at uh, the value of the, the stock, if it generally is a stock, we look at it at the highest point in the day and the lowest point in the day that the, we received it. And then we find the middle point to determine what the value of the stock is for purposes of the gift annuity. So basically, once we know that, 
then we can prepare the contract. And it's usually two pages, a very uh, straightforward document that says, you gave us this, we'll pay you that. And we all agree it's a wonderful thing. Now, different states have different um, additional language, but um, the language will be consistent with your state if it's a state where uh, we can legally issue a gift annuity. Your payments, generally, we do them quarterly. Uh, you can receive it by check or you can receive it by um, a direct deposit situation. Very easy, not a lot of hassle. And then each year you will receive a 1099 saying that you received this much income and it's filed with the IRS. Uh, you'll be happy to know that um, our firm Green Oak processes a lot of 1099s and all of them are already in the mail today. So people will not be worrying about getting their 1099 um, February 1st. They'll have it in plenty of time to get ahead of the tax filing year and um, not have to worry about it. So again, it's a very simple process. We can do it basically by mail. Um, we're happy to answer questions you have. Um, we're here to help you support pet partners. Awesome. And good for you, Bill. Greeno getting them out before January 31st. Thank you. That's an accomplishment. All right. So with that, um, I think we've really covered most of what we intended to cover, Bill, in terms of uh, charitable gift annuities. And um, if we look at the next slide, we're so happy you joined us. And I have to tell you, we're so appreciative of, um, oh, that's the sample illustration, that's right. If, you, if you'd like a sample illustration, as Bill mentioned, then please reach out to me. We'll have our contact information here on the last page. And um, happy to, there's no obligation, believe me. We're just happy to share information about uh, charitable gift annuities. And um, so with that, if we go to the next slide, I just wanted to say thank you um, on behalf of Pet Partners for all you do for supporting um, our teams and, and doing so much to support the mission of uh, Pet Partners. And we're glad you joined us today and hope uh, to hear from you. And we still have some people have joined us from California, I see, Bill's where you live. Um, and so thank you. Um, Bill, do you have anything to add before we sign off today? I just think a charitable gift annuity is a, a wonderful way to create a legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, it has benefits for both you as the donor and for pet partners as the charity that you care about. And um, like I say, they've been around since 1832. So it's a pretty stable, effective way to make a gift to the future. So thank you. Absolutely. And thank you all for joining us and have a good rest of your day.